Good evening and welcome back to the Australian Stock Market Show. John McPhee, founder of the antivirus company, once said that making money is easy. The difficult thing in life is not making it, it's keeping it. Our aim, as always, is to help you make wise decisions so that you not only make money, but also keep it. Tonight, we'll share with you the best information and education in our upfront, no BS approach to all things stock market. For our main topic tonight, we're going to take a look at investing in cryptocurrencies, where Dale and I discuss whether now is the time to buy. Hello, I'm Janine Cox, your host for tonight, and joining me is Dale Gillam, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. There we go. Hello. Hello. You know how many times somebody said that to me? I'm really good at making money, I just can't keep it. Really? They spend it? No, well, yeah, they just don't know what to do with it, so they spend it. And right. so, and people, how many times have you met somebody who's made a mozza on the market and then lost it all again, you know, in the next year or something like that? Oh, I've heard some people make some really big trades that, because the ego gets the better of them. Mm. I've mm. had people that have made a million dollars in a few trades and then lost it all in the next few trades, you know. Right. I've done how many people I've know that have lost a half a million dollars on the market in weeks or months. The interesting thing about those mm. people, and I, and I mm. often listen to people in business who have made a lot of money and then they, they lose it. So in, in each cycle that comes through in the market, that tends to happen to some really smart people, mm. but they go and then they get back in there and they make it again. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you do. I mean, the thing is most successful people have had a business failure in their, in their life, but I mean, with the stock market, you've got to learn to earn. Mm. And that's where a lot of people lose in the stock market because they don't learn to earn, they learn to... They, that's really they cute, I lose. like that. Uh, mm. we, can, we can trademark that, can't we? <laughs> so let's get back to the show. Before we get into our first segment for tonight, again, we're going to take some live calls on the show. So if you do want to chat to Janine and I and ask us a question, then this is your opportunity to pick up your phone and call us now. The number you need to dial is 0392909988. That is 03 for Melbourne, 9290. Double nine, double eight, and as always, to get things started, the first person to call into the show right now will get a free copy of my latest book, Accelerate Beautiful. Your Wealth. Now, both Janine and I are super champing at the bit to chat to you, so pick up your phone now and get dialing. While we wait for you to call, it is the first Tuesday in the month, and this means that we have a look at the Australian stock market. So let's get into the charts. Okay, on the screen right now, we do have a chart of the All Ordinaries Index, and you've got some in another interesting blue line there, so I'm waiting for you to tell me what that is. Oh, you've got you in suspense, haven't I? Know, I? I actually know what it is, but I'm just pretending I don't. <laughs> but you don't know what the next line is. I don't know what the There's next another line one. is. I'm going to put my glasses on. All right, so, so we we're looking at the first one. It's the, the ones with the bars here, which you can't see the detail of the bars, but you can see all the different colours. That's the All mm. Ordinaries Index. So That's we can see this was the high with the GFC, Okay, November 2007, so monthly. monthly chart. This is the high in uh, February 2020 when the, the market COVID. capitulated. And since then, we've obviously gone higher, but not too much higher. Mm. And then we've pulled back to the range of these highs here. So we really haven't gone much further than where we were during the GFC, which mm. you know, is still interesting to me. Mm. Um, but when you look at what hap is happening to other markets, so people always talk about how you can diversify across um, the stock markets, which you know people invest in the US market and it's done fantastically well. But the interesting thing to mm. pay attention to, it's fine to make that money. The interesting thing to pay attention to is the falls because yes. when the stock market falls, it doesn't matter whether it's the Australian market or the US market, they fall in dramatic fashion and they fall around the same time. Mm. So you can see here, we've had the 87 crash and the US market did the similar sort of thing. We've had and the, the, the dash line doesn't show as much detail with the US market because of the nature of the chart, but it is showing you where these significant peaks are. So the US market peaked out before the Australian market did. So we had the tech wreck around that time. In the late 90s, early 2000s. And, it, yeah. and it's interesting to consider mm. what markets are made up of. Mm. So we know the US market is tech heavy. We know the Australian market is bank heavy, financials and um, materials, materials and, and resources heavy. So we can see that our market actually peaked much later in this period here. We also bottomed later back then into 2003. Yeah, few... and there were different dynamics happening mm. in 87 that affected everything really quickly. 
than what was going on in the te in that tech wreck, tech boom, tech wreck back here. You can see how the US market seemed to have much stronger rise up into that high than what our market did. It was very choppy. Mm. And the Asia crisis had an impact on markets around that time as well. That was through, through this period late in the 90s. So we can see at the top, both markets seem to fall and peak around the same time. So that was with the GFC. So this is global financial crisis affecting everything across the globe, the financial system, et cetera. We've seen COVID, a pandemic, the global phenomenon affecting markets at the mm. same time. So what's going to happen next? So that's the interesting thing from a big picture perspective to think about. Now, my thinking is that because we are resources and financials heavy, I think we're going to see some sort of difference happen and a split out in the future with our market and the US market with mm. the tech stocks, you know, being considered much more growth. So you can see that, um, you know, markets have gone um, off, they've taken the pedal off the tech sector, which has caused, you know, the tech sector to pull back in a significant way. We've seen the cryptocurrencies come back, more yep. speculative areas come back in a, in a big way. Mm. And we're now looking to see what's going to happen with resources and see the financial system settle down. So I just think it's interesting to look at the market from a big picture perspective and have a look at some of those themes that have happened in the past and what potentially could happen in the future. And we will update you with more detail on that down the track. But I just wanted to show you also, this is BHP overlaid over the top of the um, now, for students who do our courses, you're probably really familiar with this sort of thing. But for people who are not, it can get quite confusing to see so many lines across the chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the Dow Jones for a minute and just have a look at what happened with BHP. Now, BHP's had a massive long-term low in 2016. Resources stocks made their lows. Mm. Our financial stocks had a meltdown 15, 16. 15, 16, five right. years. At the right so, so that's very different to mm. what, if you go and look at what happened, the US market hardly made a blip during this time. We had a much steeper move down than what they did. And we saw a much steeper rise because the tech stocks out mm -hmm. of that. So I believe, and our market has always played catch up at times. And then the US market will take over. Um, our market then takes over. We well, you know that in your book, yes. it, in the first book, it talks about that research that was done. And every five years, there's a switch of the a change of the guards and the Australian market mm -hmm. takes off. So yeah. I'm factoring in that plus looking at commodities and what's happening with big stocks like BHP to think about about what could happen over the next few years and seeing how that's all going to play out. So, Are you going um, to tell them or not? Not on this show. <laughs> okay, so I'm saving that for a topic. How about what's going to happen in the next six months? Yeah, well, looking at that, I, look, I'm really a little bit confused right now mm -hmm. about some of the resources, stocks and what's yep. going on there. There's not a clear picture just yet. Okay. So we need to wait and see over the coming weeks what's going to happen there. Banks are starting to confuse me a little bit mm -hmm. in the short term. I'm, you know, this is why I've gone back to the big picture to stay focused on what's going on more mm. medium to longer term, because Westpac's just done something recently that's thrown the analysis, you know, straight out of the water mm. in terms of how it's unfolded. So we're going to come back to you and on future shows with more about this sort of thing and what's going on in those most important sectors. Okay, so they're getting the long term view from you and the short term view from me that's on right, the Monday. That's right, on market a Monday report. every week. Fantastic. So that's it in on the all odds, or what are we All right, that hmm? is it, actually, thanks, Dale, from us on the Australian stock market. Now it's time to get into our first email for the night. Okay, our first email tonight is from Tony who says, Hi, Dale and Janine, could you please let me know your thoughts on KMD? I have an average cost of 89 cents. It was originally a short-term trade. It has previously bounced off long-term resistance at $1.56 twice. If it breaks above this level with some volume, I was planning to add more. Now, my trailing stop loss has been the uptrend line, uh, which it has now touched with the low, with low trading volume. I'm not sure whether my exit trigger point should be a bit softer, given the current market has dipped. This is specifically an aspect of selling that I've had some confusion about exiting when the market has dipped. I'd greatly appreciate your comments. Jeez, Tony. Cool. That's an interesting point that he's raised mm. about mm. when the market has dipped. Yeah. Well, has it finished? Has it finished? Yet? We don't know that yet. We don't yet. know that yet. So, you know, we're looking at a stock mm. um, on, the, on the chart there that mm. has actually peaked twice around the levels that he talked about. So we're looking at um, in May, I think it mm. was, and in 
Oh, what's that? It's not coming up on the screen that's, for me. Just recently. That's around October. October. So there we go. So it's peaked twice and yeah. now it's pulled back from there. I'd say that there were plenty of, you know, exits there to... Um, I can count about three exits up around between 140 <laughs> and 150 at least. To get out. But, you know, mm. the the thing is, if he's still in the stock now, then, you know, what do you do? You're just going to wait to see if it unfolds or does he... Do you... If you were still holding that, would you be out or would you just wait to I see if it starts to move ago. up? Yeah. So look, looking at it now, mm. and because it is a a volatile share, mm -hmm. they can move much quicker, can't they? So let's they just can. have a look. Some stocks you might actually hold for, through dips. Yes. So there are stocks that can weather the cycle. If you picture your longer term picture and you've done the analysis, mm -hmm. indicates that it's more likely to go up. You may actually be able to hold these types of stocks through the cycle. But this one is not one of those, no. um, you know, it's, it's fallen 24% in that move, which indicates the market's only fallen 11 Mm. It's fallen 24, so it means it's yeah. twice as volatile as the market at times. Yeah, and I'd be interested in why he changed his view from short term to longer term now on this stock too. It's, is it was he second guessing himself, or is it because he made some money then he wasn't sure he wanted to make more money? Is there an emotion in behind all that? Or was but maybe that a he change just thinks strategy? that it could go further. I don't know. Look, could I, mean, be. Yeah. I mean, if I was holding that right now, mm. the level there is a pretty good. Mm indicator for that low there if it takes mm. out that it could go further you've next got more levels okay. underneath these lows but yeah. i would say if i you know i'm taking a different view to you mm. so if that's okay with you no okay <laughs> if you want to talk to janine and i give us a call on a nine two nine zero double nine double i pick out the phone and give us a call now but that's it on km whatever the name is kmd okay our next email is from brett hi janine and dale i bought brain ship at around 36 cents a couple of years ago and kept taking profits throughout the years and now it's at roughly a dollar fifty i don't have much in terms of capital in this but my returns have been huge so wondering whether you believe it's worth selling for profit i have now now off such a small investment or just holding onto it in case it really takes off. So holding onto a small remainder, you know, left into the in the position. Mm -hmm. And should I just keep holding or what, what should I do? That's the question really. But why well, I, I wouldn't hold a small position, just get rid of it. Well, it becomes like a mm -hmm. distraction, doesn't it? Mm. This at is some point, watching all the time. So yeah, yeah it depends what a small position is, because what a small position is to one person might be a big position for someone else. So, and it's also an if come. It's like if it does this, then I'm holding onto it. I'll make more money. But you can always buy back in later on anyway. So what's the difference of holding I know, but onto the it? way people think with these is these yeah. sort of stocks because it's already accelerated mm. so much. I mean, mm. let's just have a look at this thing. Yeah, have a look at it. So, the, so from, from this point here, it's probably gone up two hundred. What is it? Two hundred and twenty percent. So. When a stock does something like that, people are thinking, well, there's always more upside. They do. It's that whole, you know, all well, I've already, it's made this sort of money last year. It's going to do that in the next year or so. And it may or may not. I don't know. But right now, is, is it something you would hold? Well, it went up today. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess you could trail it underneath that low or underneath the bar. or It's, it's a really short-term speculative um, mm -hmm. thing with this share. But because it was up today, it could keep going up in the short term. We could see it go up to back to that $2 mark. Could be a false break. Could be, but because everybody I guess, they're wanting to get in on really, really cheap. Yeah, I guess the point is now thinking mm. for this person to think about. Mm. Okay, if you're still in it now and you want to stay in it, then you've just got to have an exit strategy from here. It's really yeah. all there is to it. Yeah, I agree with you. But we've now got our first caller to have a chat with. Fantastic. So I think we've got Dave on the line. Dave, are you there? Yeah. Dave, welcome to the show. Where are you from, mate? Yeah, I'm from Sydney, guys. How are you? Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming on to the show. You've got a question for us, Dave? Yeah, I actually, I spoke to you last week about resources. And uh, I I sold last week at about 65 and it dropped back down to the 54 that you guys sort of predicted. And I bought back in today about 56, 57. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's going to continue to uh, recover and go back? And that's why I got your book today. I bought your book as well. Fantastic, smart man. Can I ask you why you bought it today? What was the uh, what was the analysis behind it? Uh, I fascinated by the how you guys read the charts last last week. I'd like to actually get uh, some sort of software to sort of replicate that actually, because um, yeah, I'm fascinated how you guys look at from a technical analysis. Yep. Well, boys, done the fundamental thing, you know, and jumped in. Yeah. Um, but, uh, in okay. the stock. 
So you bought in because we thought it would go to that point, and then you've jumped jumped yeah. into it. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I was already sold out. Okay. Yeah, I sold out, yeah. okay, yeah, well, I sold out and I uh, bought, back so asked you guys last week, and I bought back in the day, and uh, hoping for to uh, to get, to make the trade successful again. Okay. Um, so let me get your thoughts on what you think of the chart, and do you think it'll keep going back up or okay. sort of ways up? Okay, Dave, we'll have a look at Min for you, but thanks for giving us a call. That's great. Look, I guess, you know, this is a really interesting example. Uh, mm. I think we're talking about short-term trading, obviously, here. So it's really, really short-term trading. Well, he trading. sold out because we said it was going to fall away, but then he bought back yeah. because it fell to the level that we, a mm. level that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not a strategy in my book to buy. No, no but he's actually bought mm -hmm. today, yeah. I think he said, didn't he, 56 yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Um, and I'm just looking at that daily chart there. Now, mm -hmm. you know... I've got to put my glasses on to see. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got different rules in how they trade. Would you enter there? I wouldn't, but I'm not a really short-term trader. Oh, I would. But I know, I know people who would. I wouldn't even enter there if I was a short-term trader. Well, I know short-term traders who would. They're waiting mm -hmm. for the reversal and they're waiting for that momentum up but again. Has that proven it's reversed? Hasn't, but that's what some of the short-term trading's about. But, mm. And we talk about that mm. and we, we, we mm. actually teach people that they can do trading on any time frame. They can, but you have to have rules around that and just, just because it hit a level that we thought it might hit doesn't necessarily mean it's a buy signal. No, that's, that's right. That's a good point. That's, that's, and experts always put out projections, if you like, and that's what I talked about last week was the difference between, uh, in my market report, the difference between a forecast and a prediction, mm. you know. Forecast is what might happen. So we will have a level where we said it was, but then we might have another level underneath that and another one of that. If it breaks this one, it'll go to that one. If it breaks well, that one, we'll go to that one. we have another level under that for it. And we do. And it's about $48 or yeah, $46. So just be careful, Dave. Mm. I think that's the real thing that Janine Decide and I Decide on saying. what your stop loss is yeah. um, and set it mm. to a level that you're really comfortable with. Because mm. mm. I, I don't agree with your entry point. That's pretty much what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, well, moving on, we have a question from Andreas, I think Andreas, I think that's how you say it. Hi there, great show, please have a look at my portfolio. I have four stocks in my portfolio and would like to buy again more of the same stocks. Um, he's got CAN of C-A-N, it looks like it's consolidating and RSG looks close to the bottom. Would you buy them at the moment? If not, at what price would be a good time to buy? But we're only gonna do one stock as we normally do. But you know how many emails that came through with people wanting two and three stocks? It's really popular, isn't it, this mm. time of year? Yeah, we only ever do Everybody one wants stock answers. anyway, but that's okay. So look, can, um, can, can do or can not can do? Not do. Mm. I think it's, you just took the words right out of my mouth I think you there. need to put an ED on it, it's canned. And we know someone famous who died recently who sings that song. Which one? It's a someone that you've always liked. What are you talking about? Meatloaf. Oh, I could, I'd do anything for love, is that one? I, oh, I wasn't thinking of that soppy song. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Um, can group now. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really scraping the bottom, don't it's, you? That's terrible. It's terrible. Like you just, you have no idea whether this thing's going to go out mm. the back door or whether it's going to go up because of that chart. Mm. So oh, I would say at this point, stocks can always go lower. It's trading at about... What is it? Close? 28 yeah. cents. It's about a million shares. If this thing week. doesn't start trading above 32, 33 cents soon, mm. it's going nowhere fast. So I would say it needs to prove to you that, think about stocks from the point of view of, mm. it has got to prove to you that it's worthy of your money. Mm. You know, it's not about thinking about just how much you can make. Is that thing worthy of an investment? And right now I'd say no. Well, it's not, a, I agree with all that, but the people lock, often will look at a stock like this because it's 30 cents, mm. thinking that's going to be a bug, and it's not. Because um, it's already traded up know, that high. That's about mm. as attractive as a pork roll at a bimitza. <laughs> you know, it's like nobody's looking <laughs> at it. What are we talking about here? I'm just saying, it's not, a, not an attractive looking stock at the moment. Okay. So why would you look at it? Right, okay. You know? All right. Now, <laughs> Can we get on to something else? Yes, please. We have a caller on the line, and it is Ganesh. Ganesh, good evening, and how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I have a quick one. Um, National Australia Bank. I have a position, a small position, um, taken l last year, last um, September, uh, on twenty-eight dollars. But the thing is, recent uh, um, recent upgrade from major brokers. They say uh, interest rate going up. National Australia Bank will do very well compared to other banks because other banks have a 
uh, high de- um, um, interest rate going up, that is the mortgage market will suffer. Um, in, in this case, business will flourish. Uh, please give me the opinion. Since I have it, this is trending down. Um, I just need some opinion whether I continue to hold because my purchase price is $28.45. Okay. Um, Ganesh, would you mind telling us, are you a long-term investor? I am medium-term investor. I bought it based on the fundamental because of the interest rate going up. Um, in especially the business will come back after the COVID-19 and the reopening. The, uh, the especially National Bank will do very well compared to other banks. Okay. Such, um, that's my uh, fundamental Great. point of view. Mm. All right. Um, Thank you very much for that. He was very sharp and short. He was. To the point, isn't he? I like that. The only thing that happened is the interest rates didn't go up, did they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they will for at least a few months, but I think okay. the RBA even sort of You'd think that they would almost put them down if they could. but Look, it might give the banks an opportunity to raise rates outside of that. Solid theory. Know. I mean, I understand what it is. And generally, financials go up with interest rate rises because of the margin. But mm. the margin may not change. And this is what some people don't even take. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a big chat with a, a journalist of the um, Sydney Morning Herald Daily Telegraph. Uh, it was only yesterday again. Like, he rang me last week about exactly like this. And he just wanted to clarify a couple of things. And he was interviewing a few experts and I'm saying, but if the banks have got a 2.5% margin on the RBA rate and they put, RBA puts it up half a percent and the banks still have 2.5%, how are they making more money? Yep. So it just depends on whether they pass on the whole rate rise or any part of the rate rise. And that's really where interest rates rising can be a little bit deceptive about how it's going to affect the stock. But have a look at the stock because mm. I know NAB's your preferred bank or one of your two preferred big banks. Look, NAB's been interesting. It's actually mm. held up a lot better. And mm. look, I'll be completely honest about this, that NAB wasn't one of my preferred picks and it's held up better. I tried, Ganesh. I really oh, tried. Look, you know, I'm putting it out there. Um, it's done really well. So I think that you've picked mm. a really good bank there, Ganesh. And I think that, you know, this is a short term volatility that we're mm. seeing right now. Yep. If you were to ask me which bank I preferred, I prefer, look, in the past, I preferred ANZ and Westpac. Westpac. Um, and Macquarie, of course, has done really well, mm. right? Commonwealth Bank's always been a solid performer. Mm. Look, I would say right now it's probably in a little bit of a short-term concern given that it's mm. fallen and broken that momentum. But if you're a medium to long-term investor in banks um, and your view is much bigger picture, then you can afford to have some downside volatility. It just mm. depends on your rules. Okay, so what are you mm. saying to Ganesh? So I'm suggesting that he needs a stop loss still. If he wants to trade the stock and be in and out of shares, you've still got to have a rule there mm. and not just sort of go on our opinion if we like the stock now or not. Mm. It's really about how much you're willing to risk. Before, if the stock were to keep falling, you're going to be comfortable. You know, you're comfortable. Mm. I used to say this to people at workshops, and I think I've mentioned it on the show before. You're comfortable risking a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. What is it? Really, be honest with yourself about that. Not just thinking in percentage terms when you're thinking about stop losses, because um, it can affect your psychology if you're not honest with yourself. So. Look, have a really good look at the chart. It's fallen down, what is it, 19, uh, 12%. So yep. it's in line with the overall market, which line, yep. being financials heavy, you'd expect that to be there and it's relatively consistent. Hmm. So I would just draw the line in the sand and, and with any stock. Mm. There you go. Cool. There we go. That's it for NAB. Next, we've got a question from Fahad. Hi, Dale and Janine. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Thank you very much and New Year. I'm totally loving this market pullback as it makes me excited and gives me opportunities to buy. But I always find it tricky to buy. I look at the chart so many times before buying it. Can you help a little about decision making? Secondly, I have a couple of stocks and would like you to have a look and see if they are close to a buy. Seek Limited and Megaport. Cheers, Fahad. I'm wondering if Fahad is someone that we know. I might know. be a student because we had a Fahad um, some years back. Mm, no, interesting. Let so. us know. If it decision is making. Mm-hmm. Okay. Decision making is the only two decisions I can make is buy or sell. That's it. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. At any time. At any time. At any one time. So. You don't have a, you, don't, you have a forecast and an mm-hmm. expectation of, and do the analysis based on how things might unfold. Yeah. But mm-hmm. pe- do people have harder choices making a decision to buy or sell? Oh, they definitely have a decision issue with selling. Yeah. So mm-hmm. how do we help Fahad make better decisions? He's got to have rules. He's got to have rules. Mm. And that's, that's or why, she. We, yeah. Well, 
uh, yeah, I'm not sure there. Um, but the thing is, it's what, what Janine's saying and what we're both saying here is that you have to have a purpose when you buy and sell. That's, you have to have be very, very clear with your purpose, why you're buying, um, and understanding the stock and doing your research behind the stock is, is really a, a fundamental thing that you need to be doing. And then you need to have rules around that you're buying and selling and rules that you've tested and trusted so you can trust it. And the, the big thing, people guess at exiting. And, and there's probably you're probably sitting there at home, and not just for hard, but most people sitting there at home going, yeah, yeah, I struggle with getting out of stocks. But that's where you put the money in the bank, and that's when you make the money. While the money's in the market, it's not yours. The market controls it, not you, because all you can decide is getting, getting in or getting out. So if you've got a trade, then you need to be good at making exit decisions. And so that's where we have those lines in the sand, which is what Janine was talking about earlier, and rules around what we do in buying and selling. So if you haven't read my book, go and read the book. That'll help you with those decision makings. Now have us have a look at Seek. Okay. Um, yeah. I think you wrecked my chart because I was just looking at it before. I, I don't know what you did, I but I need, you. I need another helper, guys. Can we have someone? I've got a sore finger. I went. I played golf oh. the other day and I've got a look. snake. Oh, okay. All right. Is Here that we go. enough sympathy? Okay, let's have a look. See, you put Silver Lake Resources in yeah, there somehow. I don't know what you do. All right, let's focus. That's sick. Um, yep, that's right. No, not Silver Lake. Yeah. Okay, go. go. Uh, so when we're looking at Seek at the moment, mm -hmm. it's actually fallen quite heavily. So let's first, the first thing we could do is just have a look and see how far has it fallen. 26%. Yep, fallen deep. So we compare that versus the market. We know that overall this recent fall has caused it to be down 26% recently. So it the could be enough. down 11. It could be enough for Seek in could. terms of the pullback to see it then take off from there. Mm. So, But it's really too early at this stage with Seek. It's um, really too early for a lot of stocks, but that's mm. looking quite nice. If it does find some support and gives some signals that it's going up, would you get into that? Not right now. I said if it gives you signals and stuff like that, not today. Shall I ask you what signals? No. Okay. You're not playing the game, are you? No. Okay. So <laughs> we do like it. It may have found, found its bottom or seek may have found its bottom, but please just be careful at the moment. Uh, one of our golden rules is to trade on confirmation, not speculation. And all too often people say to us, when I ask, why did you buy that? They go, oh, I just thought it might be going up. And that's speculation. Uh, always do your research, always know why you're buying, always know why you're selling. So thanks for sending uh, your email through. Now it's time we get into our main topic for tonight, Janine, I think. Fantastic. Let's do that. Yeah. Now, as um, we mentioned earlier. Yeah, you and I, we had a look at investing mm. in cryptocurrencies mm. and we want to discuss tonight, is now the time to buy? Um, now, unless you have been hiding under a rock, you will know that cryptocurrencies across the board have been falling for a while. Some have recorded falls of more than 45 per cent. To bring this into perspective a little, those who bought Bitcoin 12 months ago would now be sitting on losses. If you bought two years ago, you will be sitting on some pretty good profits. Absolutely you would be. But uh, this begs the question as to whether the Bitcoin boom boom has actually finished. And if so, have those who did not buy Bitcoin years ago missed the boat? Or is this just the latest pause in Bitcoin before another boom starts? Now, it's a very, very common to hear stories of investors making 10x profits buying and selling cryptocurrencies that they are bound. But as you all know and can appreciate, for the most part, people only go around promoting their wins and not so much their losses. So this brings up two questions for me. The first being, can we assume that everyone is achieving these sorts of massive profits? And secondly, what are the risks in trading cryptocurrencies while attempting to make these sorts of profits? Mm, good mm. point. Well, you are in luck, Dale, as tonight, or should I say, our viewers are in luck, as we will answer these questions and more as we get into discussing the three top cryptocurrencies and whether now's the time to buy them. Just between you and me, yep. well, and everybody else, Shh. I may have more than three. Oh, jeez. You, you seriously can't count for now unless you can't count. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to stake more in the charts again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's answer my first question, and I will say this with a great deal of caution, that yes, you can make money from trading cryptos, and a lot of it, if you get it right. But it can also, I can also honestly say that you can make a lot of money trading literally anything. All right. Now, don't be surprised. I agree with you on that. Holy oh, hey, geez, that's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you can make money on anything, and that is that is priced in the markets, providing you get in at the right time and you know how to manage your risk properly. Mm -hmm. So there's always a but. 
And you can make money, but oh, that's what I'm saying. Totally. You can drive flat out towards a cliff, but... Mm, what happens then? <laughs> yeah, I get it. And so does everyone watching. Now, the point being that we can do or achieve almost anything. However, we need to be mindful of the but, as this is important to know and understand. Oh, you're going to crack me up here. Too many butts. That's already too many butts. You took the words right <laughs> out of my mouth again. Now, in the past, we have demonstrated on previous shows how it is possible to make more money trading stocks than Bitcoin. And this may surprise you when it comes to these sorts of markets. It is not common to find, or it's so uncommon, so common, I should say, to find misinformation mm. out there, particularly mm. about these sort of speculative markets um, that are heavily reliant on FOMO. Oh, no. Fear of missing mm -hmm. out. That is why we continually say that it is important for you to be independent in your thinking. And a part of that is the ability to read the chart so that you can confirm everything and make better decisions. Better decisions means better profits and less stress. Mm, so I like less stress all over the time. Only recently record levels of trading were reached in cryptos and yet we've seen some dramatic falls. Now in any market cycle, there will be rampant speculation and talk of big profits that attracts people with little or no knowledge into high risk speculative areas. Now basically those in early and those with large positions push push the message hard to drive up prices so they can sell into the demand. Now, eventually the buyers run out and prices do start to fall away. So there will be a lot of people sitting on big losses right now. Mm, especially in mm. Bitcoin, I think so. Now, absolutely, history demonstrates time and time again what occurs in boom and bust cycles with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies not immune to these because it's all about market psychology, isn't it? It is. Now, why don't more people pay attention? I just don't understand that. Yeah, I don't know, but greed and fear. I think that's mm, my guess. Greed that's and your fear. simple answer. Mm -hmm. We can look back to 1637 and research tulip mania that took the price of tulips to incredible heights. The masses fueled by, were fueled by rampant speculation and this drove prices to crazy levels mm. for a flower bulb. <laughs> We know flowers die and it doesn't make sense what people do. If you like, you can look this up on Wikipedia to understand the phenomenon and how fear and greed work in the market. Mm, I, saw, I saw something a little uh, earlier today that pe pineapples were once considered really, really valuable and it's on your reach. Mm. And people paying $8,000 for a pineapple just to sit on their table to prove they're rich. That's nuts. Pineapples. I don't even like pineapples. But Janine, that's a good suggestion. But now more recently in the late 90s and 2000s, it was the tech boom and the tech wreck. And then we saw the GFC hit and CFDs were highly oh. leveraged instruments that mm. caused so many people to do some crazy things over that time. Yeah, and I think this is important to understand. The sheer fact of the matter is that human behaviour doesn't change through the ages, but fortunes do. So the most important thing you can do for yourself is to observe your own behaviour mm -hmm. in the market and how you currently make decisions. This is vitally important for you because when the bubble eventually bursts, you want to make logical decisions based on knowledge, not emotion. So true. So true. Now, to be perfectly clear, what Janine is actually saying is that we want you to be able to trade safely in the market. And to do that, you need solid rules so that you know how not just to enter, but more importantly, to exit safely. Achieving this is actually far more important than which crypto you might want to trade in. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Really good point. So our advice if you decide to invest in cryptos is for you to stick to the biggest, most liquid cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, who recently had a market cap of around 700 billion. It's Whoa. changing all the time. Ethereum with a market cap of around 290 billion and Binance at around 60 billion. Also, Tether uh, recently had a market cap of around 80 billion. Of course, their values are changing every day, so just keep an eye on that. Mm, but they're big ones, aren't they? Mm. Now, today there are over 16,000 cryptocurrencies. Yep, 16,000 cryptocurrencies. Yet, yet, just 20 make up around 90% of the total cryptocurrency market, which is estimated to be worth around, wait for it, sit down, $2 trillion. Wow. This all sounds like a lot of us, like, like the stock market to me, 
But now it's time we go and take a look at the chance of some of these major cryptos to understand the market or current market opportunities and whether now is the time to buy and how to manage your risk. So basically what you're saying is it's a whole new market. It is a new market, but so it's still a market. So you've got the biggest heavyweights and then you've got the smaller stocks. And same, we know same. the top 20 are most of the stock market. Same, same. Mm. Okay. Top 20 in the US, same, same. Top mm -hmm. 20 in Australia, same, same. Top okay. 20 in any market's pretty much the same, same. It they is... drive the market. Yeah, actually, we forgot to mention Chinese New Year tonight. I just remembered. did happy Chinese New Year. Yeah, I just thought of that thing because mm -hmm. I was thinking of lanterns. Okay, um, New South, New Z uh, the New York Stock Exchange Bitcoin Index is now up on the screen for you. So mm -hmm. you can see there that... Um, the Bitcoin index, I've got the monthly chart on the left and the weekly chart on the right. And we can see that as of, I think it was yesterday's close, that we've we've had a pullback of around 46% to the close. It's obviously gone further than that in this recent decline. What I think is interesting mm -hmm. is the fact that people talk about this coin and that coin. Oh, do we really care which no. coin it is? And look, just to illustrate that, I've just put a few of the coins up here. Doesn't that look very similar to what we just looked at with the Bitcoin index? Yep. And that was Bitcoin Cash. This is Ethereum, Ethereum, right? Also quite similar to what we've just seen. They do differ slightly because obviously they're being traded slightly. Well, Ethereum's a little bit different. It's not yeah, like it's Bitcoin. Backed. It's mm. backed and it's more of a people can list all their list yeah. their cryptocurrencies on the Ethereum platform, mm -hmm. so to speak. So it's a little bit different than just Bitcoin uh, yep. on its own, which I do like. And this one is actually Binance mm -hmm. coin. That's yep. another another decent size um, cryptocurrency. Number three, isn't it? Number three or four. Yep. And we, I'll come back to the others, but I just wanted to give mm -hmm. people a, the picture. Now, this is different. Very Cardno different. being a smaller one, less you know liquidity than some of these the biggest ones. The shape is actually different. It's actually traded through these recent lows, just um, of last week or so. And then we're looking at Tether. And I'm thinking, is oh, my no. data right? I mean, that just looks bizarre. I think your data's wrong. It looks like a heart monitor, doesn't it? It does. I think so it. I thought, well, look, we won't even bother to go there because I don't know um, mm. much about that one. But Bitcoin, cash, we're looking at this Australian dollar um, converter. Yep. So we can see there the pullback. Let's just have a look at the degree of the pullback that we've seen on Bitcoin, which of course has got to be around the index. So we've got 50.4. Yep. Um, and then we've got Ethereum, which has pulled back. We need to see these in their entirety, which has pulled back around 50. 50 right? Very similar. Correct. So, I mean, which, which one would you, if you had to choose one, because you, we talk about all the yeah. time putting a small amount into more speculative markets, which yes. cryptocurrencies are more speculative markets. Mm. So would you put money into Bitcoin Cash or would you put money into Ethereum if you're going to choose? Look, I'd, I'd, I'd put... I wouldn't have a problem with either one putting cash in it because Bitcoin is, it, it's, I won't say it's mainstream, but it's becoming more accepted. Mm -hmm. And we do get Bitcoin is accepted in, a, um, is the legal currency. And I try to remember what the name of the country is. The small countries accepted it in late last year, but it is a little bit more accepted. Ethereum, I like it because it's not just a currency. It's a platform that other currencies are listening on. So it's a better business model in my book. Um, whereas Bitcoin is not backed by anything. There's no currency. There's no gold backing and all that sort of stuff. So Bitcoin is going to be a lot more volatile than Ethereum over normal times. And more volume comes into it, the less volatility you're going to see. But Bitcoin is moved around by the big whales. So we're seeing a lot of the big whales that they're selling now because um, it's like in the stock market, about 70 to 80% of all the trading in the stock market is done by the big institutions, Australia and the US. And when they're selling, the market moves. Mm. And when they're buying, the market moves. The same in Bitcoin. When these big whales are selling, they're moving this down. And when they have, when they're finished selling, it'll start to go back up again. So now you'd think that based on a fifty percent fall, mm. that the fall may be over now. It could be, but Bitcoin's fallen ninety percent before. Mm. So you need to expect that it could go to ninety percent, but it may have stopped where it is. But we haven't. It's a little bit too early to tell. But I'm interested enough in it at the moment. And same with Ethereum. I do like Ethereum. Yep, so for like with Ethereum, mm. we could see it rise to, rise to about 5,000. Yeah, but I think gone are the days where Bitcoin's buy and hold. Mm -hmm. I think gone are those days. We had those days, they were finished as of you know, the last year or so because when when you're getting the masses into a product like this... Oh, we're starting to hear over. everyone telling people to get into it. Mm. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's when you know that the bubble is bursting. But because Not the bursting, but it's starting to get... Mm. Um, to the, and look, well, it's the, big, crashed, money's, the it? big money sold it off. Yeah, it's crashed. Yeah. It's technically crashed. I mean, I was saying last year that yeah. Bitcoin will crash in the next two years. So which tech stock has actually pulled back mm. a lot recently that you've been following? Sorry? Which of the tech stocks? 
I just wanted to go outside the box for a minute. Mm -hmm. Which of the tech stocks has pulled back that you've been watching recently? There's been quite a quite few Quite strongly, tech. though. Which mm -hmm. is a big one on that you've been spot. talking about? Well, well, one of the ones in Australia, Atomos. You know, that was one no, of my No, I'm talking about tips. US. Are oh, you talking about US? Jeez, mm -hmm. jeez. There's a few of them, actually. Just give me I'm one. Not, no, I'm not going to give you one. Oh, you want geez. me to put one on a chart. I'm not going to do that. Right. Because I can't think of which one Look, would match a I chart. Would, I, no, I'm not asking but you to match it. But they are falling He wants to try to make it perfect, but I'm suggesting you guys go and have a look at the well, tech stocks perfect. and the tech sector and, and have a look at the Bitcoin and see what's happening. We can talk about that another time as well. Yeah, but right now I do like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think they're worth watching. I think we may see a good run on those towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Right now it's a bit too early at the moment. Okay. All right, so we're, then we. But which one did you choose out of the two? You haven't given I didn't, me an answer. I did both. Oh, you just buy. If you're going to buy Bitcoin, if you're going to buy current cryptocurrencies, you'd put 50-50. Yeah, yeah, put 50 but, but of a portfolio, if people are wanting to invest in cryptos, mm -hmm. how much of. Because we say 10% of your portfolio into more speculative areas. Mm -hmm. So how do you divide up that 10%? Well, I would then divide that up into maybe four positions. Mm -hmm. So it might be so two of those might be crypto, and you might have something else Some, that could like be a, a stock. smaller stock or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. But but don't people and just to, but in yeah. saying that, because if we say to people this is what you do, they go and do it, but their um, ability to manage their emotions and their ability mm. to actually trade and set stop losses and set rules, maybe they don't have that ability. Yet, but, and so therefore, people mm -hmm. take things like a prescription. Yeah. We've said, okay, 10% of your money can go into something speculative, but it doesn't mean it should. No, it doesn't mean it should, but that brings up, just as I'm wrapping up here at the moment, is to me, I get people all the time pushing emails through and saying, can you teach me how to trade crypto? And we teach it's, people to trade. It's and a it, chart. It's re Whatever the name is on the top of this chart or any chart we bring up, whether it's a currency, commodity, crypto, a stock, an index, how you trade we're, them is all the same. You we're know, seeing a repeat of yeah. all of what happened in the GFC because yeah. in the GFC it was the same thing with CFDs. Yeah. People were saying to us, Teach oh, we want to learn CFDs. how to do And we're saying, okay, there are some risk considerations that are different because of the leverage. However, you're just trading the underlying stock. Yeah. So, and it's a re it, even though it's not exactly the same of what pre-GFC, we're seeing people treating the market and cryptos in a similar way. No, forget they? the name on the top of the chart. It's how you trade it is the important thing. Having Learn to trade yourself. stocks and you can learn to trade higher speculative areas yep. of the market. Fantastic. Well, that's it for our topic tonight, isn't it? That is. Cool. Now, before we get into our next email, I hope you have your phone ready and have been patiently waiting for the opportunity to call into the show to ask Janine and I your most burning questions. Now it's time to get dialing. The number you need to call is 0392909988. That is 0392909988. Double nine, double eight. So get dialing now. While you call us, we'll get into answering the next email. So email, so call now. It's getting a bit hot in here, guys. Did you turn up the heat again? No. Oh, okay. Geez. So we have a question on Origin Energy from Shane and someone called JB, and we um, will read the email from JB. He says, hi, Dale and Janine. Hope you're both well. Thanks for your weekly analysis and commentary. You really enjoy the show and your banter. Keep up the great work. I was hoping to get your thoughts on Origin Energy, if possible. I bought in at $4.60 last year as a long-term investor. Would like to add to my position, but think there might be an opportunity for a drop in its current price, given market conditions. And once commodity prices cool off a bit, thanks again, JB. Look, I mean, stocks mm. go up mm. and they go down. That's just a reality of the stock market. And so it has to go down to go back up. This stock, mm. I think it's trending up beautifully. I think it's brilliant. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, people think, that, again, you know, it's mentioning the current conditions, the current drop. And to me, it's that's what happens. You know, you can't walk upstairs to put your foot down. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the next step, which is higher. And then you put your foot down again, you get to the next step, which is higher again. So, and that's what stocks do. And that's a way you need to allow the stocks move to move up and down. That's why Janina and I are always saying, make sure you know your time frame and what you're doing because you need to give a stock room to move. And I'd like, I'm with mm. you, I like this stock. I think it's great. Okay, fantastic. Hey, all right, I believe... All right, do we have so another question? No, we've got to, well, no, we've got to have a look at a few more charts, actually, or something else on this. All what right. was his other question? Our next email okay. um, we've got is from Nigel. Hi, I've just purchased the second book. Wow, looking mm. forward to reading it. 
Regarding cheap stocks under $10, I've been eyeing off a 22 cent SVL as a long-term five years plus investment. It looks promising on paper. The silver deposits they might have near Mudgee, New South Wales, um, could be interesting. And mm. my thoughts are silver demand is increasing worldwide. And if they hit paid it, it might be taken over by Rio or BHP and could become a 50 times stock in the next two years. If it folds, it's only 22 cents max loss. What's your thoughts on it? What mm. great question there. God, if I put $10,000 into a $10,000 stock or $10,000 in a 22 so 10 stock and it goes bust, I've still lost $10,000. <laughs> so what's the relevance of 22 cents? Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. It's about, yeah. it's, it's really, is it a good stock to buy? And that's what you're going to answer, isn't it? Now, I've done something a little bit more mm. for this um, great person who's written in about silver mines. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing, we talked about silver recently yep. on the show. So when you're looking at stocks that are heavily into a particular commodity, mm. often their charts will replicate, and at least for a period, what's happening in the index mm, yeah. or what's happening in the um, in commodities in the, in the future. So if you go and have a look at the silver futures, we can see there that the recent activity looks very similar to what we saw on the SVL chart, and I like that. Mm. Um, I'm just looking at the, the chart though, it's taken out this recent low which is a little bit of a concern. I'd be thinking it needs to get back above 24 cents or thereabouts to really start making a move because there's risk to the downside right now. Is this uh, something that you would look at buying long term? This is a high risk speculative area. Mm. Um, it can be very volatile and trading in silver can make great mm. money for people. But it's, it is high risk. Cause, uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because it alarms me. Is put, this could be a 50x stock. Never ever. Do you ever think about no. how much money you're going to make on a stock? Look, I look at the charts to see what the upside is. That's mm -hmm. what you do. You've got to look at the upside mm -hmm. and the downside. But I'm not thinking in terms of 50x or 10x or anything like that. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking, okay, does the reward justify the risk being taken? Mm -hmm. So is, then, is there going to be enough in it to be able to, you know, justify saying, well, I can risk that amount on it, you know. And yeah. so looking at this, the downside risk at the moment is that it could end up down at 14 cents hmm. right now before it does what he's expecting. Yeah. Oh, so, look, so agree, you know, yeah. and a lot of people hmm. will continue to hold stocks that are falling away eat because they're focused on what they think they're going to make with it. Mm. Yeah, they, they start off with a short-term trade, which turns on to a long-term buy and hold. Yeah, better off to take mm. that because mm. the, if it's only a short-term thing and then mm. stocks or silver, for example, as a commodity, mm. is more likely to keep going up over time. But right now, mm. it's sideways. Yeah, mm. don't like the stock at all. Um, we do have another caller on the line, Janine, and I believe we've got Russell on the line, have we? Yes, how are you, Dale and Janine? Good, um, mate, good. Great. Where are you from? Uh, Perth. Perth. Lovely hot, hot Perth. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we're a bit hotter here, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Janine tell, makes tell me a bit where, hot under the collar. Tell me where to buy a property over there and I'll be there. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't do that. You don't want her. You I'd, don't want I'd her. love to go to Perth. No, but Russell doesn't yeah. want you there. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful place. Come over any time. Cool. Uh, All right, Russell, I'm assuming you've got a question for us. Yeah, AT1. AT1. Now, AT1. I would have thought that would have gone up because of the COVID um, rapid testing mm -hmm. because I believe they manufacture it, don't they? I've got no idea. I've never even heard of this stock, mate, so it's probably it's a lower liquid stock for me, but you're looking at buying it, eh? No, I already hold it. Oh, you um, already hold it? Okay. Yeah, so I'm down about 50% at the moment. You're so down about 50 When did you buy it? Oh, about a year ago. About a year ago, okay. And what was your original intention for it? Short, medium, long term? Oh, no, long term. I, I mainly buy all my stocks long term. Okay, cool. Um, cool. Well, yep. we'll have a look at it then for you. Um, and Janine will actually give you her... Um, uh, hopefully she's really kind and tells you it's going to go up, but I'm not going to guarantee <laughs> it, Russell. <laughs> cool. All right, okay. Janine, you can okay. take over. Okay, Russell, thanks for the great question and for the interesting stock. Now, when I first looked at this, yeah. I thought, oh, Atomos, but that's not Atomos. It's not Atomos, It's no. Atomo Diagnostics, so totally different. And just looking at the liquidity of it, I think it's important that mm -hmm. we just take a bit of a look. I'll expand up the weekly chart because there's not, first of all, the first thing I notice about it is there's not a lot of history. Yes. The second thing I notice about it is the liquidity is not great. 
Okay, so we're looking at down here, we've got 13 million and we're talking about something that's about 20 mm. cents or 22 cents. So the real concern is that he's saying what he's, I think what he's saying is that he was mm -hmm. expecting it to go up. He was. Because of what they're involved in, but they've done the opposite. Doesn't always happen, does it? It doesn't. So, but looking at it here, okay, let's just have a bit of a look and understanding about how this thing moves. So that's a, that's a nearly 60% fall mm -hmm. in just a few months. Really important to understand the personality of whatever you're trading. Um, you know, like the partner that you might meet, Russell, you want to understand who they're, what they're about before anything. How are you giving relationship advice? Well, it sort of fits with the stock market, okay, doesn't it? Okay, fine. Okay, personalities, it's all about that. So if we're looking at this, I'd say, look, I'd be really um, interested in it if it got back above 30 cents and started to do that in a big way, because at the moment it looks like it's trying to find support. Mm. If it takes out this low, I'd say it's history. It's, it's history, really in yeah. trouble. Um, that's December 2021 low. So just keep an eye on that one closely I'm, for now. I think if it hasn't, with all the stuff that's been going on with COVID, if it's got stuff to do with them and it's not taken off like a rocket, yeah, it's then strange, isn't it? it does say something about the company, doesn't it? Mm. I think I'd have my Could money elsewhere. Could be consolidating. Mm. Yeah. Next we have a quick, thanks Russell, by the way, that's great. And see you in Perth someday. Next we have a question from Dino. Hi, Janine and Dale. Um, a question for you about AGL. On Tuesday, November 30, 2021, 60 million shares were traded in AGL, yet there was no significant change in the share price. Is this a volumetric error or is something else going on which I'm not aware of? Cheers, mm. Dino. Yeah, it's mm. what you do not know, Dino. That's what it's about, isn't That's it? That's what gets you, isn't it? Do you so, want to answer him? Um, no, I think you can. No, you can. Okay. Ladies first. Oh, look, all right. Look, often these things happen and it can be aftermarket trades mm -hmm. that happen. So someone's moving some significant money around and it could be, um, it can often happen at turns in the market as well. So just have a look at stocks and see where you can mm. see some of this spike volume because it did, it's not right at the bottom, but it's near the bottom um, where AGLs turn. So that can often be an interesting sign of a turn in the market. Mm. We don't know that the bottom is in, this recent pullback is in yet. It could pull back further, but just interesting to watch and it looks good. Yeah, mm. so, I mean, there's probably a few reasons why this could happen, isn't it? With, it's, yeah. either, it's either trading in the dark pool after the market closes or you know, insto swaps. Yeah. So there's, it's if the price is not moving, you don't need to worry about it too much. I think that's probably the answer, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, it's it's often the indicator mm. of, an, of a turn, and we can mm. see that the stock actually reversed right around that time there, so that's often a match with what's going on I there. I think some, one thing, actually, I just was thinking about, a lot of people don't know when a managed fund, a new managed fund starts off, mm -hmm. they go out and buy stock off, off other institutions at a discounted price because they just yep. want to offload a big bucket load sometimes and they'll take a slightly lower price to the market just to get rid of them in one hit, okay. which makes the managed fund look really good in its first year because it's bought them cheaper than the market yep. and obviously their return looks good. So sometimes that is happening in the market too. So mm -hmm. there's a third reason I thought of. Some inside info there. That's great. All right. Oh. Thank you for that, Dale. Jeez. All right. We've got a next email is from Shane who says, hi, Dale and Janine. I've just read Dale's first book and have ordered the traders pack well done to hopefully up skill now this is going to be my first ever time investing in the stock market although i do have some knowledge of forex and technical analysis my question is about bhp i've done analysis on the monthly chart and looking at the bounce and three months upward momentum with a strong close in january i feel this might be a good time to make my first investment on or around the 1st of February, I would really appreciate your guys' thoughts on whether I'm on the mark, close to the mark, or that far away I should go back to the book again. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh, and what are your th thoughts, first of all, when you're looking at BHP? I actually like BHP. I think it's really, really good. I think more medium to longer term, I think it's great. Yep. Um, I think your analysis to buy it today, I think you're a little bit early. I think that's just looking at the chart. There's no solid rules around mo about buying it. I think I'd be careful. You said you've not. this is your first trade, but now you're saying you've got technical analysis skills and FX skills. I think I'd throw my FX skills out the window and just focus on the charts because there's a lot of stuff in FX that they talk about won't really work on a BHP. Um, but look at the chart itself, um, and I think the thing looks good, but just a bit, a bit too early. Yeah. Have you got okay. anything you want to say? I know this is one of your favourite stocks. Yeah, look, I'm actually following Rio more at the moment yeah. right now, So, but they're very similar in terms of the way that they're unfolding. How so? Um, well, they've both had that significant rise, and they both... Show people that. 
Um, do get I the need pointer to? out. Yeah, get your okay. mouse out and start and talking they, about it. And they both did not produce a rule, whether it be trend line mm -hmm. or any other reasonable rule to mm -hmm. enter in yeah. that recent rise, which was interesting because it hasn't happened very often in history mm -hmm. that we've seen stocks make that rise. In fact, it's so rare that it's yeah. not funny. Um, but that's what, what made me question, well, where are things really going? Because mm. it's not behaving normally. No, it's not. And Rio's not the same. And I know Shane's But then we've got the Rio issue too. with the, the, you know, the moving from the UK Stock Exchange. So yep. I thought maybe that affected it. But then we saw Rio do the same thing. Rio did the same thing, mm. you know. And at this point in time, would you be buying into that right now? It's falling. So you don't know where that pullback yeah. is going to end and yeah. how it's going to unfold. So I really need to see that exhaustion of that move first. Mm. Mm -hmm. So how far is it likely to go? Look, in the short term, it's, it, um, mm -hmm. well, how long's a piece of string, but let's look at um, a short term move. Well, it could fall in total around that 12% mark as okay. a, an, just an area of potential support okay. for it. It could fall less than that. So stay out, Shane, until it tells us it's stopped falling and start to rise again. So, but thank you very much for the question on BHP. All right. Now we have a question from Andrew. Hi, Dale and Janine. I am a reasonably experienced and successful investor and have no problem executing stop losses. My issue comes when the whole market or parts of it are correcting, when normal stop losses are triggered. But most other companies in the sector or entire market are also dropping a similar amount. Do you sell or hold? You never know whether a correction is just that, a more significant crash or entering a bear market until after the event. Thanks for becoming a regular part of my Wednesday mornings. Thanks, oh, Andrew. Hopefully he has it with a cup of coffee too. <laughs> um, yeah, I, to me, my answer before we actually look at it is mm. the stop losses we teach it's not everything is going to be triggered. And so um, they do work, um, even with these big drops we're actually seeing. Seeing It just depends on where you set your stop losses. But the thinking, second thing is is we know whether the market's crashing or not or we're entering a bear market because of the analysis we do. So I would understand somebody who is more of an investor who's looking at fundamentals may not be able to do that. But Janine and I can do that all the time. I mean, we, before this pullback, we were... We were saying the but, market's going to pull back. But some stocks can fall further than others. See, mm. So the, the risk that you they take can. in just holding because mm. you're not sure if there's a crush or not yeah. is that you could have a situation like Westpac. Mm. You know, you didn't expect Westpac, and I didn't certainly, to fall mm. as far as it has. Mm. And it has fallen that far. So it's not to say that mining stocks couldn't do the same thing. Correct. Bank stocks are falling like that. But that's that. why you take your exit. Um, yeah, so that's why you take your exit because you don't know mm. what's on the other side of the chart mm. is basically the rule. Yeah, so mm. what, what you're saying is don't second guess yourself. If the stop's there, just take it because you can always buy back in later on anyway. Yep. And brokerage is that that cheap. And, and I know some people go, what if I'm losing, then I'm realising the loss and they don't want to do that. And to me, that's one that's a mentality that will actually keep you broker. Mm. So it'll actually affect your returns. You just need to stock stock is falling and it falls further than what you think, then you're going to be out in a much, much better position with more money in your bank account. So basically swings and roundabouts. Down the track, money. that's true. But in the short term, it mm. can be a challenge for mm. people to understand and accept that yeah. because what are the consequences if you don't take those stops and then mm. the stocks keep falling i mean that's the really mm. that's the whole point of it isn't it absolutely mm. can we read out an email i know we've got more emails than what we had have we got time to read out in one of the emails um look i mean right now i don't have that email in front of me you don't have an email in front of you no because i didn't pick them up and that's my my mistake Jeez. here so someone Ring in and save me here right now. <laughs> I'd be very grateful if you could call in and talk to us about the stocks that are on your list. So Jeez. Call we, uh, now. Yeah, well, What's we the had number? Two, well, 1300. No, uh, 03 929 because we did get a lot more emails than we can fit into the show. And uh, Janine was supposed to print up a couple of extra emails that we had, but she forgot to bring them into the studio. But um, it's all on stop losses, isn't it, at the moment? So we've it's done all on all stop on, losses, yeah. We've done all on stop losses. So um, let's keep moving on with the show anyway, and we need to wrap up. But if you have called into the show or you wanted to call in the show, but you missed out on us answering your questions, then um, watch our show next Tuesday between 7 and 8 p.m as we really would love to chat with you. If you are not able to watch live, you can also email your question ahead of the show, like most of those people, all those other people did. Now you can do that by sending your email in to info at wealthwithin.com.au. And remember to include Wealth Within Live in the subject line. Not one person this week did it, so remember to do that. 
Now, hang on. I'm just sort of taken aback here because yeah. one minute we're telling people to ring in and I put my innocent look, you know. You told them to ring in. I want them to ring in and talk to me. Are and they you say, I don't know. Are they? I don't know. Okay. Also, we really appreciate your support um, for what, what we share with you each week. You can do this, and it's so hot in here right now, simply by subscribing to, subscribing to our channel. So if you've not done so yet, please hit that subscribe button now. And also give the show a big thumbs up. Okay, now, well, that's it for tonight's show. We do hope you've enjoyed what we've presented tonight. We've also, we hope you've enjoyed receiving, or we've re enjoyed receiving all of your emails, and thank you to those who called into the show. We love the opportunity to chat with you personally. As always, thank you for joining us, and we hope that you've had a great week. For now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading. <laughs>